Hi again. This time, uh, in this video, we're going to be talking about parallel circuits. This is for principles of engineering. However, it could be used for digital electronics. It could be used for any kind of introductory electronics course. Um, information is pretty basic, but you know, at the same time, it can be pretty complicated if this is your first time going through this kind of thing. So, what is a parallel circuit? First of all, the last video um, we talked about series circuits, and in a series circuit, there was only one path that the electricity could follow. And in this, we find out that there are multiple paths. Multiple paths for electricity mean parallel. So you can see here we have three resistors. And as the electricity travels through the circuit, starts at the positive end of the battery, if we're doing engineering kind of uh, conventional flow. And it comes to this little location, this dot here. And this is called a node. And at the node, it has a decision to make. Does it want to go down through this path, through resistor one, and back to the negative terminal of the battery? Or does it want to go through straight through and maybe hit resistor two or resistor three. We got three different paths that it could follow through all in every situation here. It's going from positive end of the battery to negative end of the battery. Okay, so something like this, right, is going to be occurring. You're gonna see me refer to this a couple of times, these green, blue, and supposed to be orange, it looks yellowish uh, markers. So that's kind of the idea here is we can, we have a choice, okay? Some characteristics of a parallel circuit though, because of the way they behave or this number one when we're talking about resistance see with the series resistors okay series resistors we added those things up the 100 300 to 200 ohm resistors we added those up and got a 600 ohm resistor the resistance was larger in the end in this case the resistance is smaller and the mathematical relationship it follows is the one that's listed right here with all these fractions it's one over it's reciprocal of each one of these that we're going to add up Okay, and so what you'll find in the end, and we'll work through some examples, is that the total resistance is smaller. So if I start with 100, 300, and 200, I can expect a neighborhood of the, uh, I don't know, it's going to be smaller than 100 whenever we're done. I wouldn't say like anything terribly small, but maybe 50, 50 ohms in the end would be uh, something to shoot for. So that's an interesting part of how, we, when we combine things in parallel, how they react differently than when we do it in series. Second thing we know, the current doesn't have to be the same in every path. So when we had one path with resistors in series, we had one speed. If somebody way up at the front of the line slows down, we feel it whenever there's only one path. We know we immediately slow down with them. But however, think of it whenever you're like heading out to the bus lot after school. If there's three different hallways, three different paths that you can take to get out there, one of them might be slow, one of them might be fast, one of them might be just right. You know, So the current doesn't have to be the same in every path. However, what we have found is that the current in the individual pass, those three individual paths, will add up to a number we call the total current. So they add together, they add together straight addition thing to get a total current. I'll show you that in the next slide. It's going to make a little bit more sense. The last thing we know is this. No matter what path we take, no matter how complicated the route gets, when we go from positive into the battery all the way around to negative, we have to lose the same amount of voltage no matter which path we go through. So that means with something simple where it's only parallel, like the picture I showed you in the last slide, it doesn't matter which one of those three resistors you went through, it's going to drop by 12 volts. That makes things really, really simple mathematically as far as how to solve for everything in the equation. So let's go back real quick and look at this current idea. Okay, current, the small currents add up to the total current. What we're saying is this, if you took a look here, Okay, right now, it doesn't matter which path we're going to end up going through in the end, resistor one, two, or three, but all three of them are combined at this point in time. So we have the current from the first one, the current from the second, the current from the third, all together here. Okay, if we travel down through here, through this part of the path alone, this vertical piece, this is the only spot where I1 is isolated, where it's only the only, the only current that travels through this is the current that goes through the first resistor. Now, if I1 goes this way, that means that I2 and I3 are left to go along this path. So I2 and I3 are here. And then once it splits, I2 is alone traveling through this path. The third current, I3, is the only remainder that goes through here, and it makes it all, all the way around. But then we start recombining. It hits this node, and after this point, now we got I2 added back in with I3. And after we hit this node, now we have all three of them together. Okay. And if we were to take all three of those values and add them up, whatever the current is through each of these circuits individually, through each of those branches, branches, we would find out that those would equal the total current. And the reason that's important is because the total, total current can be used with V equals IR for the total voltage and the total resistance. 
So it's the number we can use in that particular part of the equation. So what are you going to be asked to solve for? Nothing different than what we did with series circuits. We have a voltage, current, and resistance. We have it for every single individual resistor, and we also have it for the total. That for multiple methods, just like in the series, there are multiple methods for solving unknown quantities of circuits. I'm going to lead you through a couple, okay? So step one. Fill in the given quantities. I think that that's a, just a given, right? I mean, the first thing you should do, and by the way, you should be drawing out this table. You should be labeling it exactly like I have it because that's going to make things really easy. Again, just like with series circuits, the hardest thing to do is to figure out what in the heck am I supposed to solve for next. So if you can do this, that's a huge first step. Now, do not be the person that tells me that the total resistance of the circuit is 600. If you type in a 600 up here, you're mistaking this with series circuits. When we do parallel circuits, we get a smaller number out. It's going to be probably, again, in the neighborhood of maybe 50 or so. It's going to be smaller than the 100. I know that. Okay? So we're going to move forward. Don't say that it's 600 for the total resistance. But the next step is actually the really easy one for currents. Okay, I mean, excuse me, for parallel circuits. That's, I don't know where I got that. The idea is this. No matter what path we take, we go around the first loop, we had to lose 12 volts. And if we lost 12 volts here, there's only one place that we could have lost it. It was in resistor 1. This is the only thing we encounter in that first path, that first loop. So that means resistor 1 has to be able to drop the thing 12 volts. All 12 volts are used going through it. We went through the second path, same thing. We would encounter resistor 2, but then we come back here. That's the only thing we encounter. 12 volts had to drop there. And the same thing here with the 200 ohm. It's the only thing we encounter. So that makes it really simple. For parallel circuits, you just copy that voltage straight down. And look at that. That means we have three rows right here, right here, and right here, where we know V equals IR at each of those locations. And the only thing we don't know is I. So let's just set up the math and solve, which you've seen I've done all three of them at the same time. We end up with 0.12 amps, or 120 milliamps. We end up with 40 milliamps, and we end up with 60 milliamps. Um, by the way, no surprise, okay? No surprise that if I have 40 milliamps, that 120 is three times as much. And if I have 300 ohms, that it's one third of the total resistance. So you'll see some patterns like that start to show up. Okay, notice all my answers are in milliamps, okay? But that's how you solve for the individual currents. So we're almost done. I mean, 10 out of the 12 values solved in just a couple of steps. After that, here's what we know. If I take I1 and I2, three, and I3, excuse me, and add those three up, I get the total current. So there's the one thing that we need to remember here. Add the little currents up to get the big current. In the series circuits, it was add the little resistors up to get the big resistor. Okay, so find a way to remember that, that you're adding the currents this time. It gives us 220 milliamps. And then once you know that, you know voltage and current for total, which means it's really simple to do V equals IR on the top row and get 54.55 ohms. Again, in the neighborhood of 50 was kind of a ballpark estimate just because I've done this before and I figured out some ways to kind of estimate an answer. 54.55 ohms. Now, alternate methods. Sometimes you won't be asked for all of this information. You'll just be asked for like the total resistance. Right. So rather than go through this work and write out this entire table just to get this one value, if that's all you all you need, don't forget that we do have a different way to go about it. Okay. So same circuit, same problems. You're only being asked to solve for this thing. Why go through all the work? Okay. Step one, don't forget that you can use this mathematical relationship. So here's what it would look like. One over each resistor. If I add them up, it'd be one over 100 plus one over 300 plus one over 200. Now, mathematically, you can have a calculator. You could probably do that, okay, if you know how to work your calculator, but let me show you a way to do it in your head. Instead of thinking of these out of different denominators, let's get them all in the same denominator. So the smallest denominator that I'll go into would be 600, okay? So instead of 1 out of 100, we'll call it 6 out of 600. Instead of 1 out of 300, we'll say 2 out of 600, so on and so forth, right? And now we can see that we have 11 600, but that's not the answer. That's not my resistance. 11 divided by 600 is something really, really tiny. That's 1 over the total resistance. So if 11 over 600 is equal to 1 over RT, that means RT over 1 is equal to 600 over 11. We could just flip both fractions. You could also cross multiply and solve from that previous step if you like that. But either way, you're going to end up with RT is equal to 54.55. And then once you have that, then you know V equals IR. So you throw that 54.55 in, you solve 
and you get 222 milli, 220 milliamps. Okay, so now it's your turn. Going to have some problems for you. You're going to take these and submit it to 1.2.3 DE parallel circuits. The answer key is on the last slide, so you know you're going to know if you have the right answers or not. But try to avoid looking at that until you're done. Use it to check and not to actually just copy off of it. Okay, I do want to see your work. Make sure you draw your circuit in your notebook. Make sure you draw your table next to it. There will be a quiz later on just to see if you know you picked up on this kind of stuff. Okay, so good luck. Let me know if you have any problems.